Hey everybody, this is Hunter Willis continuing the series of FinOps Fridays. Our first conversation of the new series is going to be with Josh Bowman. To hear the whole episode, head on over to wherever you listen to podcasts. Just do a search for FinOps Fridays and you can find us there. We're going to go ahead and dive into the episode now. Thanks for listening. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us today. Uh, again, my name is Hunter Willis. This is FinOps Fridays. Today, we have Josh Bowman. Josh, tell us a little bit about yourself and experience with FinOps. You've been active with FinOps in the community, doing this for over a decade. Tell us about yourself before we get diving into things. Well, today, Hunter, uh, I'm the voice of the FinOps practitioner inside of Aptio, and that's been built off of a long career uh, being in this industry. Um, and where you know a lot of it came from was my previous role there at Electronic Arts. And at, at EA, I, I, I did everything that you could possibly think of underneath the, the FinOps disciplines, the 18 different uh, tracks that we have there. Uh, started off uh, coming out of grad school and joined the, the finance org. EA being a software as a services company, really video games are a custom application every single time. I looked over the fence of supporting our custom, uh, starting off with our corporate assets, looked over the fence and said, you know what, it'd be a lot more fun to support our games. And being a custom built application, that's probably terrible for an engineer because you have to start it from scratch every single time. <laughs> right. But as a technology perspective, you you have no migrations, you, you have no tech debt, you're starting from scratch, which means you get to take advantage of bleeding edge technology. So all the way back in like 2012, cloud was something being deployed for video games, custom applications. And that was a lot more exciting to uh, do from a finance lens than uh, your ERP systems or your outlooks or, you know, things like that. So I, sure. I jumped over and started supporting our games. Almost and literally getting to play with all the new toys at multiple it, levels, right? That's absolutely right. It's, 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 uh, you know, you're on bleeding edge technology and then it's, it's supporting video games. How cool, how cool is that? Um, and after a few years, you know, supporting the, you know, from a finance perspective, I looked at it and said, you know what? I'd rather be a financially minded operator than a operationally minded finance person. And that really opened up the door for my career progression. So I made the, ju the jump to the dark side of ops and said, I'm going to be the finance's best friend and I'm going to understand everything from a technology perspective from the business. And then how does that relate back to finance? So forecast allocations show back building data warehouses in order to support all that data building, reporting to visualize that, getting into even more operationally minded things like capacity management and uh, cost optimization. That's been my career over this period of time. And I've, I've really grown up as the industry has grown up. It's, you know, when you first started, it wasn't called FinOps and now it is. Yeah. And on top of that, I know that you've been active in the community. You've talked with a lot of people and helped out with the FinOps Foundation. Um, you've you've spoken a whole lot as well. And thank you for all of that, too, by the way, and being such an active participant in all of it. So that's exactly why I was excited to have you on today. Just being able to draw from that experience. You've seen a lot through the industries you're talking through some with so many people, right, as well, not just, you know, your experience at EA. So want to start by just diving into some of that experience, I wanted to ask you, so like from a high level here, right? Just pretending that, let's say I'm in an organization that's brand new to FinOps, right? Like we know the principles of the FinOps framework. Tell me, what do you think with all of those steps and trying to like wade into this as an organization is the most important thing organizations should keep in mind either as they're just starting or kind of moving maybe from that crawl to walk phase? Yeah, the the biggest thing that I found, right, is it's it, it's a journey. Right. And you really need to be able to give yourself credit and celebrate those small wins along here. Right. Uh, incremental, you know, every day, just be a little bit better than the last day is is that because when you look at those six principles, right, I, I don't know, it's really hard for me uh, to to, you know, I almost look at it like a six legged stool. Uh, I know there's normally the three legged stool, but I almost think of it as a six legged stool. Right. To really be to create a highly functioning organization, you need all six of those. But coming out of the gate, you're not you're not going to get all six right away. Right. You're going to be able to make progress in one of those areas or two of those areas. Maybe it's 
starting with the team and being centralized from that perspective, or maybe it's, you know, you know, getting a stakeholder on board to show the business value of cloud, right? But every organization is going to have a different journey along there, right? There's not a recipe that says do this first step and then do this second step, and do this third step. And I, I wish I could give you the most important one of those six. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of sidestep you there and say they're all very important, yeah. but it's, it's in that order of, Hey, let's make incremental progress on one of them and then celebrate that win. Well, I think that's it, right? I think it kind of goes without saying that they all they all go together. You've got to kind of move in there. I feel like uh, the things that you touched on, though, right, like organizational buy-in and making sure that you get that and, like, um, making sure that you are taking all six of them into consideration and not just trying to, like, dive in towards one thing before you start to pick up on the rest. Because if you, like, let's say I say we want to take advantage of that variable cost model of the cloud, looking at, like, commitment spend and right sizing and all these things if i come up with some grandiose plan to enact all of that and then throw it at my engineers they're all gonna look at me like you know hey did you want to include us in this right like you got to get that the buy-in the collaboration and, and vice versa um do you have like thinking about your journey at ea when you kind of started uh walking down that cloud journey and that finops journey what was that like from that experience right when you were kind of getting the ball rolling along with others to to make that happen when there was kind of this aha moment maybe that you knew this needed to be a thing that was going to happen well okay ea we cheated a little bit and we didn't know it at the time yeah. <laughs> um but when you when you look back at it and you're like what was it that really made us successful and ea um you know, video games started at the you know adding online componentry just a little bit at a time. And it started with the game itself, right? So FIFA would add something of an online component. Battlefield would add something of an online component, but it was it was directly related to the gameplay. And after, and this is 20 years ago that we're talking about here. After after a few years, they're, they figured out that, you know, there's commonality on these backend systems that are being built that are helping support the online component of these video games, right? It's not essential to gameplay. And that's really what you wanted your your engineers and your studios working on is how do we make the best game, right? Not how do we make the best online backend system. Right. And so EA was ahead of its time about 15 years ago. It hired a CTO and consolidated all of the technology that wasn't essential to online game that, that wasn't essential right, to any specific itself, game or yeah, yeah, yeah. But helped support it from an online perspective. And when they made that decision, they said, you know what, we've always wanted to make sure that we have a profit loss statement for each of our games. FIFA wants to see, hey, is it profitable or not? Madden wants to see if it's profitable or not. Hey, Josh, let's, we're going to need some reports. Yes. Right? And let's, let's, um, let's keep those costs inside the P&L. But at the same time, let's have one invoice from AWS, one invoice from GCP, one invoice from Azure, instead of 200, like we did the day before. So EA said that one decision, they went full charge back overnight. They went from the day before of FIFA having its great relationship with its cloud vendor and having its own invoice to the next day, having no insight to any data whatsoever. It was just coming over in a, in a, um, a journal entry from finance. So imagine if you are in the game and you get a $20 million uh, journal entry with no backup. We had to mature very, very quickly on our data <laughs> uh, transparency back to our internal partners because they were used to being able to, to do things right away. And so, so talk this, about that. Talk about that right there. I'm sorry to interject, but talk about the buy-in yeah. and socializing this, right? Was there a methodology that you went about or was it like you kind of got the stakeholders on board and then it became a top-down initiative or – well, that was the that was the thing, right? Is they, you know, we wanted our cake and we wanted to eat it too, right? We wanted the exposure to the PLs internally, right? These are internal chargebacks, but we wanted to be able to, you know, negotiate with the cloud vendors, have one invoice, right, from that perspective. And the only way to accomplish that was by creating that chargeback methodology out of the gate. And then once once you did that, it was kind of Pandora's box. You couldn't shove everything back in the box. 
we had already made the decision of how we were going to do it and we got everything wrong right uh we charged things wrong to the wrong uh end user sometimes we charge things the sims that should have gone to apex we charge things in the wrong month we set up bad you know sharing methodologies for how we were doing shared costs but because that regimen was in place that we were doing the chargebacks every single month and the the games you know they they could yell but that was it was already there the band-aid was ripped off from that perspective so having that that disruption and that short-term pain turned out to be really worth it instead of having to go through years of trying to get there over time and so sometimes if you look at it you know what you have is a great idea if you can convince your organization or you can trip over yourself and you know fall into it like we did um, sometimes a short-term disruption with a lot of pain is going to mature your practice very, very quickly and get you in a much better spot than you would have been otherwise. Oh man, this is great because those those incremental wins have yeah. to be celebrated because it keeps everybody remembering what that prize really is, right? And then, and that you're bringing up a good point. One of the things we did right there from a cultural perspective is, yeah, you know, when we first started. It was a win just to create a forecast for the quarter <laughs> from that perspective, right? Nice. And so we all went out, you know, to team building and celebrated that. And then you look back a few years later, it's like, man, we're we're so much better at this now. It's 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 table stakes or whatever. But like, you don't be impatient with it. Know that hey, like every time that you're able to do just one more little thing, whether it's forecast a little better. Or, figure out a right sizing, you know, exercise uh, from that perspective, or, you know, get one more stakeholder buy-in or whatever. All of those things are very important to that journey that you're on. You know, something that I took, have brought with me experience-wise from like the migration implementation world is like, you know, pizza parties and coffees and stuff like that, they don't work in lieu of a promotion or like a salary bonus but they absolutely work as a soft tool to kind of grease the wheels of collaboration and put benchmarks on these things. If you're able to do that, there's places in like the federal public sector space, for instance, where that doesn't work at all because they don't really have the ability to provide those kinds of incentives, but there's little things that can be done and recognitions that can be sent out as well. Did you guys utilize that at EA in addition to kind of, you know, benchmarking those milestones and celebrating those wins? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was, there was, you know, you, and it depends on where you're at and your your you know, like how your company culture is and things like that. My group like the we did escape games, we did treasure hunts. Yeah, our 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 group was open in Austin. You know, it was based in Austin, so we you know did tour of the the capital, the state capital, things like that. And but it's also crossing right with the other groups that you work with, right? Maybe one one time you're going to do something with your engineering group. The next group you may do something with a specific business partner from that perspective. But building those bridges and and showing the importance of the work that you're doing and celebrating that is very important, right? It's a, and it, like you said, it's a team type of thing here. It's not necessarily individual performances. What did we do together uh, that really helped the company here? That's to your point, right? There's, re there's individual recognition and there's ways to do that. This is really looking at team recognition and, and what the organization was able to accomplish, right? I find those in different, di different ways that you are able to, to celebrate those things. For sure. For sure. Okay, so let's pause and let's turn around, right? We've been talking about operations. We've been talking about, you know, uh, change management and from, you know, from that FinOps perspective and like cultural implementation of FinOps and chargeback, showback, et cetera. Let's talk about FPNA. Let's say you now you're in the operation side trying to get the finance teams on board with things. You, you had... We, we talked earlier a little bit about this, but just like, what, what's your perspective from, again, turning from that operational side, getting buy-in from the finance teams when it comes to all of this? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, finance finance is like one of the first ones that you, the FP&A group, right, is one of the first ones that if you're on the operations side, that's one of the first ones that you want to be able to get buy-in from. And it's this, the same is reciprocated from the finance side. One of the first things that you want to go find out in the organization is somebody that's business minded within the operations group. So the engineering group. So either way, whatever side of the, you know, the, the fence that you're on, if you're in finance, go find a business minded person inside the business. If you're on the, 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 the uh, operations, the engineering side, find somebody that, you know, is, you know, on that finance side that cares about your particular piece of business there. 
And the the reason that like each each role there, right, is going to benefit immensely from from each of you know, partnership. When I was on the finance side, the uh, the person that I was working with was my closest business partner. I relied upon them to give me insight into uh, technology spend that I just couldn't get from a finance view. It, finance is only going to go so so low of a granularity. Um, great example is, you know, finance statements only go to a monthly granularity. Clouds, they charge you by second, right, from that perspective of things, right? So um, you, I relied upon my operations team to give me that insight to really explain what was going on to everybody else in the finance world. So you you get that insight. So I was always, you know, hey, you're my closest business partner. How can you help me get further insight if I'm on the finance side? On the operations side, you can utilize your finance team a lot, right? Finance, uh, they're structured, right? Uh, on purpose. You want your finance organization to be structured. You, They have quarterly, if you're a publicly traded company, you have quarterly deliverables. You have to report out to the street, right? But even if you're not publicly traded, there's going to be some sort of cadence that you're on that you're reporting up your results. You can take advantage of that as an operator to have, you know, Sometimes finance can be the bad guys or even accounting if that is, if you don't want to, you know, put that, but it's like, hey, let's get into this rhythm. Let's get into this, you know, cadence of things, right? Finance can help you push where it needs to from a business perspective based on their requirements of being a regimented organization. So that's just a couple examples there, but both sides, and I've worked both and I've been, you know, uh, on both sides of trying to get each other help. And that's where I built the most relationships is making sure that you are together in parallel of what you're trying to drive from an incentive perspective. Well, and, you know, uh, they're also, uh, for for better or for worse, or, you know, it's to different um, extents at different organizations in charge of the money, right? So, like, oh, yeah. your budget and everything. So, you know, I would I would add to that, and you kind of said this in a different way, but just, like, to simplify those points, like, make sure you have business people that can explain what's going on to your finance teams so they can easily oh, understand you, it and have yeah. a system for it, right? It's, it's, and it's both ways, right? So your, yeah. your business people have, like, finance is a different language than, um, than, than, than IT. And that was one of my former managers actually called us, uh, my group, uh, that we were, we were the gray matter between finance and operations, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, and it can sit on either side, right? You can have, your finance can be very technically minded. So that can drift that direction. Your, your business can be uh, your your technical resources can be very financially motivated, right? So there's a coming together of those two functions that really make this work. Um, so there's no right way to there's no right one way to do it. Um, your it's based on how your organizational culture is, but you definitely want to be able to take advantage of both sides of that because you have shared incentive to drive towards one of the six principles, right? Your business value. Right, that you need both your finance view and your technical view in order to to accomplish that FinOps principle of business value of cloud. All right, Josh. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. Thank you very much again for your passion, your enthusiasm, and bringing your experience to bear here. Uh, I want to give you the open opportunity. If there's anything else you want to add, say, or talk about right here before we sign off. Well, and this, this uh, you mentioned it earlier about the FinOps Foundation and the community here, right? The only way that we get better is by sharing our stories and learning from each other. I would be, you know, I would have been nowhere close to as far along the path of what we've been able to accomplish as it wasn't for other people that are like-minded like me in the industry that I can bounce ideas off of. I can think of hundreds of folks that I've asked questions along the way that were much smarter and much more advanced than me at the time. And that's the only way I learned was by asking those folks. So same to everybody out there, you're welcome to hit, you know, ask me, Hunter, anybody in the industry. That's something that's really good about this is that collaboration. And it goes beyond the, the, the company lines even of, hey, we're just all trying to become smarter about this. And if we learn about this as an industry, that's going to come back and help me out as well too. So that's that's it right there, Hunter. That's fantastic. Josh, thank you so much. Again, that's Josh Bowman. He is available on LinkedIn. And also the FinOps Foundation. Just head over to FinOps.org. That's F-I-N-O-P-S dot O-R-G. Uh, that is their website. There's tons of great resources, information, collaborative content, advice, and also... 
they've got KPIs on there. So if you're really trying to look for actual tangible, actionable information, that's in there too, along with industry specific guidebooks, advice. And then of course they have like a community with lots of information on there. So go check it out. Thanks for watching today. Again, my name is Hunter Willis. Thanks one last time for a shout out to our guest, Josh Bowman today. Take care and we'll see you next time.